Boo. Hey guys, Mr. Mises here. This is lesson 1-3A. I'm going to split this lesson 1-3 into three videos here. So the first video I'm going to talk about intercepts. So finding X and Y intercepts and then looking at some symmetry that we often see in calculus in terms of uh, functions. So function symmetry. In my second video, I'll go over even and odd functions. And on my last video, I'll look at how to find points of intersection without using a calculator. So let's take a look at finding intercepts and symmetry. So the first thing we, we need to know is that the x-intercepts is where the point is the point where the graph crosses the x-axis. We can solve that by setting y equal to zero. We can also find the y-intercept, which is the point where the, cro where the graph crosses the y-axis, by letting x equal zero and solving for y. So let's take a look at one example where we would find the x and y-intercepts. So to find the x-intercept, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say what? X-intercept, we say y equals zero. Right, so I'm going to say 0 squared minus 3 equals x, x equals negative 3. Remember that the x-intercept is a point, so I'm going to have negative 3 comma 0 is my x-intercept. Okay, so what about my y-intercept? Well, my y-intercept, remember, x equals 0. So I'm going to go ahead and set x equal to 0. So I'm going to have y squared minus 3 equal to 0. y squared equals 3. y equals plus or minus root 3. So this means there are actually two y-intercepts. So I can either write them out separate, 0 comma negative root 3 and 0 comma root 3. Okay, I can write them out separate or I can just say 0 comma plus or minus root 3. Either one will work in this class, um, but I just want to mention that there's two of them there. Okay, so let's take a look at some symmetry. Symmetry. Symmetry is, um, you know, things being symmetric so that there's a, some sort of a maybe a mirror image. There are three types of symmetry that we see often in mathematics, especially in calculus. We see y-axis symmetry, so something like a parabola. We see x-axis symmetry, so x-axis symmetry is this way, and we've got the second example there. And we see origin symmetry, and origin sym symmetry is basically um, if the x value and the y value are positive, then the corresponding x and y value are going to be negative, kind of on the opposite, uh, other side of the, um, of the uh, origin. Right Here's the origin. So we kind of see them as being across from each other from the origin. Okay, so... Um, graphs can be symmetric to other lines and points, but we just look at these three because these are the three that come up most often. So we can formally test for symmetry. For y-axis symmetry, we'll replace x with negative x, and it should produce the equivalent equation once we simplify that down. If we have x-axis symmetry, we can replace y with negative y, and then again, we end up with the same equation we started with. Or for origin symmetry, we want to replace x with negative x, and y with negative y, and then we should be able to get the same equation as we started with. Um, again, that's we can see that from the point corresponding to each one in each of these symmetries, right? So informally, we can just put numbers in here. So if we're like, eh, I just want to kind of get an informal kind of quick way. So I'm going to put, um, instead of x, I'm going to put the opposite of x. So if I had 1, I'm going to put negative 1 and see if I get the same y value output. Then I would know it's y-axis symmetry. For x-axis symmetry, if I put an opposite y, like, you know, negative 1, if it was 1, then I should end up with the same x value. That should also happen for origin. If I put the opposite for x and the op if I put the opposite for x, I should also get the opposite for y. And I'll give you an example of what I mean. Um, but just, you know, those are informal tests. That means you're kind of just testing for one point on the graph. It doesn't mean that the entire graph does that. That's why it's called an informal test. They're not foolproof. Let's take a look at some examples of how we determine symmetry of a graph. So um, example two here, 2x cubed minus x. So informally, I'll do the first one informally. Uh, so informal, I'll take, I'll take a point like x equals 1, all right? 
excuse me, if I plug in 1 in there, I'm going to get y equals 1. So let me check x equals negative 1. And if I do plug in negative 1 in there, I'm going to end up with y equals negative 1. So since, the, since when I put in the negative x, I also get the negative y, this is going to be origin symmetry. Remember here on the previous um, picture here how xy, xy corresponded to negative x, negative y. They're both negative. So this would be origin symmetry. All right, formally, if I did a formal kind of formal proof here, I'd plug in negative x anywhere I see an x, and then I get 2 negative 2x cubed plus x. If I factor out a negative, notice here that I get the same thing here, so this is equal to negative y. Oops. So since it's equal to negative y, we would know it's origin symmetry. So this is origin symmetry. All right, now the graph is going to look something like this, well, something like that, I'm not quite sure, but something like that, and we'll see origin symmetry that way. Okay, let's look at number three here. Uh, informally, let's do the same thing. I like picking x equals 1, so if I put x equals 1 in here, my y value is going to be negative 1. So then I'm going to try x equals negative 1, and if I would do that, I'm going to get the same y value. So I got the exact same y value by plugging in my negative value. That's probably going to be y-axis. That's definitely y-axis symmetry. Well, I say probably because, you know, it is informally. I don't know for all x. So I'm going to check that now using a formal definition. Okay, so formal now. I'm going to say um, negative x minus 2. And that's going to give me... Uh, absolute value of negative x is just going to give me the same thing as absolute value of x. Now, notice here that's the same thing as what I had to, to begin with. So that's clearly y-axis symmetry by the rules that we just talked about. All right, and it looks like this, right, which is an absolute value, which you can clearly see the symmetry on the y-axis. All right, let's look at one more. We'll do this one informally as well. Don't need to be formal. We'll do it informal. All right, let's try x equals um, 3. And I'll show you why I'm doing it a little different here. Uh, if I plug in 3 in here, I'm going to get absolute value of y equals 3. Well, in this case, y could either be negative or positive 3. So it could be either one of those two. Hmm, that one looks interesting. Okay, so um, notice here that opposite values of y produce the same value of x. So positive 3 produces the same x. Negative 3 produces the same x. In fact, if I kind of looked at this, um, x equals 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Okay, I'd have these points here. Same points, right? Okay, this is actually an absolute value. It looks like this. What kind of symmetry is that? That's x-axis symmetry. All right. Wow, that's ugly. Can't even write a y. Okay. That does have x-axis symmetry, but this is not a function, right? Not a function. And most of the time when we have x-axis symmetry, we're not going to have a function anyway. But hey, uh, these are the, the types of symmetries that we see. Okay, so there you go. What you should have gotten out of this video, guys, is the type of symmetry, the three types that we mostly see, x-axis, y-axis, and origin symmetry. The two that are functions are y-axis symmetry and origin symmetry. And then the other thing we talked about is finding the x and y intercepts. So in my next video, you'll hear about odd and even. Ooh. Okay, see you guys later.